God hear our silent prayers or should we always pray out loud? You know, I believe we can pray both ways because he knows our thoughts. And so when we even pray as a thought, God help me, get me through this. You know, I need a breakthrough. I need a turnaround. I think he hears that when you think it. But frankly, I like to speak praying because there's something about those words coming out of your mouth and especially praying the promises of God because the word cannot return void. Pray his promise that goes with your problem. What does God say? What does God think about tattoos? <laughs> we live in a time when people have tattoos all over. Now, I'm going to share a personal thing. My son loves tattoos. And so he has all kinds of tattoos on him. And they're not naked women or that kind of thing, but, you know, they're fish, they're animals, whatever. And he has those on him. So, you know, the first time he put all that on, you know, and he wasn't serving God. I just, it really turned me off. But God said to me, this is your son. And so because he has tattoos, he's still your son. So I made a decision. You know, it's not tattoos that make Michael my son or not having them make him my son. He's my son and has chosen to have tattoos. So I very much accepted him because when I look in the Bible, Old Testament has several scriptures about tattoos, but you don't find it in New Testament. So I thought, really, there isn't a lot against tattoos. Now, when I go to other countries, I'm talking about Christians, a lot of times they have tattoos on their hands. And it doesn't mean, you know, that they're serving an idol, but they just put it on. That is the custom. So I think, this is what I think, I think tattoos are kind of the custom of the day. When I was growing up, if you'd put a tattoo on, oh, I th people thought you were a total idiot. Today, everybody, it seems like, and I see them in the stores every place, they have tattoos. And, you know, there are Christians that I see with tattoos. It doesn't mean they don't love God. And maybe, now don't get mad at me. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I promise I won't get mad at you. Maybe you have been critical of Christians who have tattoos, but maybe their tattoos open the door for them to speak to people with tattoos. I don't know. And don't worry, I'm not considering getting a tattoo, but I'm just saying, let's not be judgmental of it. You know, if these are customs, you know, I go to other countries, I go to Pakistan, a lot of Islamic countries, I have to have my head covered, you know. Do, what do I do? I do it. You say, do you normally have your head covered? No, I don't. But there I do because that's the custom. And if I want to speak, I have to speak with my head covered. You say, well, does that make you, you know, a non-Christian? No, I don't think it does at all. Because they're not covering their head because they're Islamic. They're covering their head because they want to show God they respect him. So folks... There are things I wear their clothes when I go to Ethiopia. I wear the old Ethiopian cotton things because I want them to know I love their country. So let's not get hung up on tattoos, knicky knack things. You know, and sometimes you see people wearing short shorts. You think, oh dear, this is really a problem. But folks, they're people and God loves people. And I don't want to judge people by what they wear or what they don't wear. I want to have a heart for them. And if people see that you love them, that is very, very key. What is the gift of speaking in tongues and is it important? So when I look at tongues, speaking in tongues, Old Testament, New Testament, of course, there's more about it in New Testament. I see that after the day of Pentecost, people spoke in tongues and they were recognizable by people who lived in Greece, lived in other countries. They're speaking, but they don't know my language, but they're speaking the wonderful works of God. 
So, speaking in tongues is a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's not an end in itself because speaking in tongues is a prayer language. And we can speak in tongues, we can sing in tongues, and it says we built up our spirits by speaking in tongues. That's what Jude tells us, that little tiny book. So I, th for me, speaking in tongues is very, very important. And when I was 23, I, and I call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I began to speak in tongues. But then I remember on the way home in my car, I was singing in tongues. And so it's to build you up. It's to cheer you up. It's to stir you up. And you say, well, how? How did it happen? I ask. And the Bible says, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And I ask him to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Then there's something that is quite exciting to me, and perhaps you've seen it. I noticed in Acts 2 that Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to the upper room. So Mary spoke in tongues. And you say, my goodness, I like Mary. She's a wonderful example. Well, she's a spirit-filled example. So you need to ask God, if you're born again, to fill you with the Spirit. And how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Then it tells us how they began to speak. Who begins to speak? Well, the Holy Spirit will knock me out and I'll speak. No, no. You will begin by faith. So I remember I began by faith, and I'm still doing it, honey, and you can too.